Good morning, everyone. So, in our previous lesson, we looked at the reconstruction of the German armed forces between 1934 and 35 in open defiance with the Treaty of Versailles. Today, we are going to follow the actions of Adolf Hitler as he stepped up his defiance of the treaties with the remilitarization of the Rhineland, the frontier region between France and Germany. Then, we're going to ask ourselves, how did the remilitarization of the Rhineland increase international tensions? In order to answer this question, we're going to look at the following points. So, the demilitarization of the Rhineland, Hitler's gambit, Hitler's bet that he would be able to challenge the treaties without being punished, then the reason why France did not react as strongly as it should have, from our point of view, and then we're going to, we're going to try and see why did this action actually increase tensions in the world. And finally, I will read you a model answer. The question, once again, is how did the remilitarization of the Rhineland increase international tensions? So, let's start looking at the demilitarization of the Rhineland, which was one of the provisions of the Treaty of Versailles, which we have touched many, many, many times, which, sta which also stated that no German military units could be stationed within 50 kilometers east of the Rhine. Okay? It was later confirmed by the Treaty of Locarno in 1925, which we also discussed a few weeks ago. Now, the Rhineland, wh why was there such a provision in the Treaty of Versailles? The Rhineland was a strategically fundamental area for the defense of France, because it was part of its border with Germany. It was actually the totality of its border with Germany. We have said already that France was reasonably quite wary, quite worried about the presence of German troops on its eastern frontier, especially since the Rhineland has always been sort of the, the platform from which attacks on France had been launched by the Germans, first in 1870 and then in 1914. As we said in our previous lessons, uh, one of Hitler's main aims was the dismantling of the international order established by the Treaty of Versailles, which had put Germany in a position of, weaken, of weakness against Britain and France. So the Treaty of Versailles and generally the Peace of Paris created a new international order with France and Britain on top and Germany at the bottom. After he began rebuilding his army in 1934-35, again as we've seen in our last lesson, Hitler decided to step up his challenge of the treaty and send troops to the Rhineland. The legal justification for his action was found in the Franco-Soviet Mutual Defense Treaty of 1935. What does it mean? A mutual defense treaty is when two countries, in this case France and the Soviet Union, agree to a team up against another country, in this case Germany, if uh, Germany tried any military action against either of them. So this was sort of the legal justification. Uh, Hitler said, okay, I'm enveloped by, by enemies on the east and on the west, so I need to have troops on my borders for national security. This was, as we said, the legal justification. It was a sort of a sort of a gambit. It was sort of a of a bet. Hitler knew that the German army was not ready to take on the French because the German army lacked, lacked air support, lacked artillery, lacked, mil lacked military material, and so on. So he gave them the order to withdraw if they encountered any resistance. It was quite risky, and uh, as a as a gambit, as a bet, it had two possible outcomes. First. If the French actually did decide to send troops against him, his army would withdraw, would go back to the areas of Germany which were not demilitarized. And uh, Hitler would lose face. He would lose credibility in the eyes of the German army staff, which was already kind of mistrustful against him because he was not a member of their club, in a way. He was not a professional soldier like them. Also, uh, this would probably allow, uh, cause Hitler to lose his position in power, because he tried and he failed, and if a strong man tries and fails, generally he's removed from, pow from power. However, if uh, the French did decided not to send troops, if they did not resist this breach of the treaty, Hitler would achieve a very important strategic and symbolic goal by gaining military control of the border with France and by showing that the treaties could, indeed, be challenged successfully. The bet paid off, eventually, and Germany was able to send its troops 
to the Rhineland, to the border with France, unopposed. Hitler had won its first major political victory on the international scene. So, why did France not react? Why did France fail to send troops and to react to the remilitarization of the Rhineland, to a blatant breach of the international law? After all, uh, Germany had just begun the process of rebuilding its forces, and its army was still not at the same level of the French one. It lacked tanks, artillery, air support, and was just beginning to become a strong, modernized force. However, the French did not know this. They were still traumatized by the absolutely terrifying ordeal that had been the First World War, when the German army had almost overrun France in a matter of days, and nobody wanted to start another war. Being a democratic republic, the French ruling class was worried about the upcoming elections, and no politician in France wanted to be blamed for dragging the country into another huge global conflict against Germany. Finally, at the time, the attention of the international community was focused on the Italian invasion of Ethiopia, which looked much more important than the German troop movements in the Rhineland. Convincing Mussolini to call off his invasion was, the, at the moment, at the time, the highest priority of the League of Nations, and the Franco-German tensions were not considered relevant by other countries. So here we see a cartoon uh, about the Franco-Soviet mutual defense agreement, in which we see Hitler loudly complaining, as he did, stuck between a rooster, a symbol of the French Republic, and a bear, which he has always been the symbol of Russia and the Soviet Union in this case, and they are holding a, a sash that sort of constricts him. So, how did... Uh, now we need to ask ourselves, what were the consequences of the remilitarization? How did the remilitarization of the Rhineland contribute to build up the international tensions that led to World War II? In short, the remilitarization was the beginning of the quick and... Uh, immensely destructive destabilization of the international order that had been established by the, by the Peace of Paris. I'll elaborate. The victorious powers at the end of World War I, as we studied already, had devised a system to make sure that no world war would happen again. And the linchpin of this entire system was the military weakness of Germany and peace on its border with France. This is why the Treaty of Locarno, which confirmed the fact that the Rhineland should be free of German soldiers. This is why the Treaty of Locarno was so important. With that assumption gone, with German troops now swarming the border with France, the floodgates were now open to new and more radical adjustments. Another assumption, another linchpin of the post-war international order was the role of the League of Nations as the guarantor of international peace, which France and Britain, as I said, by showing the inability of these two powers to intervene effectively, even when someone was dismantling the order of Versailles right next to their borders, not in remote areas like Manchuria or Ethiopia, but right in front of France, right under the nose of Britain. By doing that, by showing the weakness, Hitler made it public. Hitler showed that uh, the two powers that were supposed to guarantee international peace and the respect of international treaties were either unable or unwilling to do so. And by doing so, Hitler also emboldened other countries who had grievances against this international order, like Italy, which was in the process, remember from our lessons on Ethiopia, which was in the process of leaving the League of Nations for good after the sanction that followed its invasion of Ethiopia in 1935 and 36. Mussolini was once an opponent of Hitler. Remember, we discussed it in the, when discussing the Dolphus affair of uh, 1934. However, by October of 36, uh, see how things change very quickly in this part of history, in this period of history. By October 36, Mussolini agreed to sign the Rome-Berlin Axis, an alliance between Germany and Italy, in which the two powers promised to help each other against any enemy. Europe was now divided into two opposing fronts, pitching the Allies, France and Britain, against the Axis, Italy and Germany, the two fronts that would fight each other during World War II. 
The failure of France to intervene against the remilitarization of the Rhineland also contributed to cement in Hitler the belief that he could get away with anything. And for a couple of years, he actually did. Here we see the, we'll look at this in the next lessons, but here we see a cartoon of Hitler stepping on the spineless leaders of democracy, taking one thing after the other and after Danzig here, uh, which we will look at in the in the next lessons, a, a series of question marks asking uh, what will Hitler do next by stepping again on the spineless leaders of democracies of the time. So the Nazi government, after the the lack of reaction by the French began a policy of aggressive expansion in Central Europe. They would take Czechoslovakia, they would take Austria, they would eventually invade Poland, safe in the knowledge that the two guardians of the post-war order, Britain and France, would never intervene with military force. So, model answer to the question, how did the remilitarization of the Rhineland increase international tensions? So, the remilitarization of the Rhineland in 1936, remember always try to add as many dates as possible, as many dates and names and details as possible in your answer. So the remilitarization of the Rhineland in 1936 came during a period of increased international tension due to the Italian invasion of Ethiopia and was successful in bringing Italy and Germany close together in the fight against the post-war international order. It also showed that France and Britain were weak and that their position as guardians of the order could be challenged without repercussions. The remilitarization happened while the attention of the League of Nations was focused on the Ethiopian crisis, which ended with Italy leaving the League once and for all. The entrance of German troops in the region bordering with France showed Mussolini that Hitler could be an ally in the fight against the two powers that were guarding the post-war international order, France and Britain. This eventually led to the signing of the Rome-Berlin Axis against Britain and France in October of 1936, which divided Europe into two opposing fronts, France and Britain versus Italy and Germany. Hitler's troop movements also showed that the post-war order established by the Treaty of Versailles could be challenged, and that both France and Britain were either too weak or too busy with their own internal issues to respond. For example, the French government did not want to take the risk of starting a new war and let the German army march into the Rhineland. The Nazi government learned this lesson and began a policy of territorial expansion in Central Europe. In the end, the remilitarization of the Rhineland opened the door to a more aggressive policy of German expansionism in the following years, which culminated with the invasion of Poland in 1939. So, those were the facts, this was the model answer, and looking forward to read what you can write. See you next time.